let's jump right on into this business techno thing that I was mentioning, teasing a lot about Boiler Room that I probably would be the only person that probably doesn't agree with. But this is basically where it started from. This so this is um where is it? Um yeah, so this is what, so this is it. Let's start with this one. I think this is the one that started it all off. So this is courtesy of the business techno page, aka business techno who were basically at the forefront of you know of the scene or the movement kind of revealing and exposing some of the more affluent djs out there who were playing these um somewhat play graves around the place at the beginning of the at the of the pandemic that really didn't make any sense it was kind of making people scratch their heads i thinking why is nina kravitz going to play this random party somewhere in the desert where people are dancing inside of hula hoops when she's you know gets paid like 30 grand per set to play in every other place so it's not like you need the money i mean it's not like you're hurting for the money so people didn't even understand it again um, you know i'm not one to pocket watch or anything but it just seemed a bit strange so they were doing some great work in that regard i think that going on and on about playgraves nowadays is a bit redundant in my opinion um i think you should just move on really for the work for the most part i think the people that want to go to playgraves will all go the djs, DJs that want to yeah the DJs that want to play will go regardless if they get shamed because you're getting money at the end of the day no one's going to turn down a paycheck because somebody said something mean to them on twitter on instagram that's just not sensible to think about like to think about the world like that the people that go to the play graves also don't care and probably don't even know what business techno even means so they're just going to go because they want to have a great time and for the most part it doesn't really affect anybody that's basically complaining about it i think the people that are that are living in those towns and those countries are more worried about keeping their families safe than what some rich people are doing in some airbnb in the mountain somewhere they don't give a fuck or i'd imagine they probably have bigger things to worry about so i do think it's a little bit of a virtue signaling thing that people are doing to kind of make everybody aware of what's going on and makes people know that they are on the right side of history quote unquote it just gets a little bit redundant i just think people should move on if anything it should it would be nice to get to place where you know maybe some of the people that were playing these mad events where they left a trail of bodies and flipping you know sky high numbers could maybe face some repercussions but there is there has not been any repercussions um most of the people that play those events are getting are booked and busy still in normal clubs around the world so no repercussions from the scene or industry has basically come into it so what more do you want us normal partners to do, do you know what i mean if the scene doesn't care why should we as customers what can we do because no one else cares i mean they keep getting booked in places people keep attending their things so just move on so it looks like they've now turned their eyes towards the resident advisor thing and boiler room thing the resident advisor thing i get because i think the understanding is that they got some funding from um the government here in the uk a pretty large amount of, of grants um you know they promised to do a lot of things in response to the whole blm movement in america with the death of george floyd r.i.p and maybe some of those promises haven't been followed through and all that stuff i get there's definitely some reasons behind that um but the boiler room thing is where i kind of you kind of lose me a little bit in my opinion but hey what do i know so this tweet here on the instagram page says the following saw a tweet months ago where someone said resident advisor and boiler room are the masters of finessing funding and we haven't stopped thinking about it for a second since i don't necessarily think that's a big revelation i think anybody that tries to get government funding is essentially financing it for the most part right you are maybe um you are maybe embellishing some of your claims you know maybe uh propping up some of your achievements on numbers and stuff so that you can secure funding in order to empower others or to provide a platform for other people to do some stuff or to give back to people i don't know you're doing it for some ulterior kind of um what, what's i would call for some altruistic reasons of course so you kind of forgive yourself for painting a few white lies but i think everyone does that. i don't think that's con just kind of reserved on if you're an advisor in a boiler room i would imagine so it says do boiler room and the resident advisor pay their artists now the resident advisor paying the artists i don't know what they want to pay them for maybe for, for the money put on those shows and stuff that might be a good thing to say i think for sure if boiler room so if as an advisor are putting ads up on their site and then they're selling tickets to an event and not paying people to come and perform that's obviously some sick shit but when it comes to boiler room i generally do think the platform that they provide for people far exceeds any sort of monetary fee that they can attach to i really do i look at the likes of who's a, that that dj um the one that went viral because some guy pulled up her tune and uh, was it cheryl Shirill? yeah is that you pronounce the name cheryl Shirill? that girl um 
part of the reason why you know she's as big as she is now is because of that viral clip yes of course it might have been a very distressing occasion to go through having some stranger pull up your your tune i think he was a fellow dj too if i'm not mistaken anyway it doesn't matter but that negative positive press that she got from that it, you know catapulted her career to where she's at now at the moment where i think recently i've read something that she decided her own label or she's got like a mentorship program or something now you know just doing the damn thing she's on the bbc or channel 4 talking about djing and going out and lockdowns i don't know so she's obviously all over the place that that did well for her even somebody like a blessed madonna formerly known as black madonna back then when that clip of her went viral where she's absolutely you know knocking the socks off that mixer that was obviously a bit thing that that it was, that was obviously a video that people are using to kind of inst, you know take the piss out of her and whatnot but still i would say that kind of increased her profile and definitely maybe she could you can't really say it has any direct correlation to her bookings but i'm sure the increased profile might have helped some way along the line um you think of somebody like a jada g um jada, a, jada g might be a good one i forgot what what but what Deck Mantle said that was that she played that boy and recorded where everyone was like, oh my God, she's so attractive. Oh my God, she can mix some vinyl. She's amazing, right? And people went nuts for that. And of course, she's probably feeling a little bit conflicted about having people, you know, basically objectify her in that way. But, you know, what can we do? So those people you know that, that i just mentioned their their careers catapulted off the ability to play on that sort of platform and have the ability to connect with thousands if not hundreds if not hundreds of thousands if not millions of people around the world and to showcase your talents and you know the the reality of it is that djs aren't that special right that's reality and i speak of it i speak as a dj myself having been in this game for 10 plus years as a promoter and a dj you're not that special do you know what i mean like they're 10 a penny anyone and and anyone and their mum can learn pretty quickly if you have a good taste in music you definitely kind of separate yourself from the pack but for the most part DJs are 10 a penny and if anything the options for them to pick in terms of artists are wide right and the fact that they're giving some of these people a platform to play on their on their stage um, especially in the early days when it wasn't really easy to live stream um it definitely goes a long way i think i would i would hate to know how much of it, it money it takes to even run boiler rooms operation right because they hire a hell of a lot of staff probably too many staff i think probably because even when you look at the before but the pandemic you look on their kind of job openings page and they always are hiring all over the place right from hosts to people working in the background room back office and stuff like it's just insane so that takes up a lot of money as well i'd assume probably not enough to justify not paying anyone a penny but still i think the idea that you know the the platform isn't as much worth than the fee is probably not right not right i don't think i think people are looking at it a little bit wrong in that respect um it probably would be beneficial if they could play a flat rate like similar to like you know some what's it Bergen's example there's other super clubs who just pay people a flat rate or maybe they play in terms of tiers that might be a good way to go and do it but in general i generally do think this is one of the rare occasions where the opportunity is far exceeds any other monetary fee you might get for doing the thing yourself i honestly do think especially if you can grab it by the balls um you can actually go and then perform show out impress people and people will really kind of you know i think end up following you for the long run i think in my opinion but again maybe i'm wrong in that respect and then the next screenshot another one we've got uh bok bok here saying just hearing about boiler and receiving 800k funding and then firing everybody if that is that true um, i'm not sure if that is true i guess that is ain't got friend and firing everybody um maybe the 800k went toward paying debts that they accumulated during the entirety of the pandemic if there's anything that definitely suffered more or worse maybe than clubs definitely was boiler room because half of their operation i would imagine maybe over half centered around being able to rock up into different venues or locations around the world right be able to move around fly stuff out artists and whatnot and not be able to do that it must have absolutely decimated their business so to get 800k funding NGK funding to split between staff members, you know, a hundred people on your on your roster is not a lot of money when you especially when you put into you know you probably add up all the operational costs and stuff it's just not a lot of money uh, for anybody that's actually worked in a small business or worked for a startup that's very fairly small you would know how quickly um staff salaries and just the operational costs in terms of having renting an office and all that stuff basically cost you 800k definitely won't go too far so i don't really know the history behind this or the background but i would imagine there's probably more to it than just they got the funding and they said fuck off and took the money and went to flop in you know um Cote d'Ivoire or something I don't think that's what happened he said hey, are they still expecting us to play for free another one says wow here it is when soliciting UK government sites Borium said we've established careers of established artists like Honey Dijon JDG Forshe and I'm Cheryl which they kind of have I won't say they've established it 
I don't see what they, why that's so like um, crazy for them to say that. I don't think why is that so crazy for them to say they've. I don't think they've established, but they definitely did help to boost the careers of Honey D John for sure, Jada G for sure, Forte Forte hundred percent like 100 percent, you can't tell me fortet's career hasn't been helped greatly by his association or his ability to play on boardroom often and cheryl or cheryl however you pronounce her name i am cheryl she definitely has um, benefit from it because she was a fairly i won't say new but not well-known dj prior to that you know viral clip that went out of her of course you don't want to be known for a viral clip like that but still you know in terms of turning lemons into lemonade that was definitely a really good occasion of that. i don't really see what's wrong with claiming you know you were able to boost people's careers i think that's actually a good thing going forward um it's a good the next screenshot says incredible grift and shit housery this is about a guy called chris duckenfield funding application protocol aside we're talking about a ticket skimming um enterprise masquerading as a cultural force and fucking a cctv company run by the aristocrat yeah this is just some classes shit in it that i don't really understand so does he have to be working class to run the boiler room? That's what people have to, I've wanted to say. I think people need to look at who really owns the record labels that most of these people are signed to or the clubs that they attend and they'll be in for a very, very big surprise. The CCTV comment is just a nonsense, really. Like, it's live streaming. Who? What? So what did you think? Did you think that um, when flipping, what's his name? what's his flipping name uh oh he tried to warn us before your phone and your instagram account and your facebook and your twitter do more damage than what cctv company could ever do trust me um they've got all your behavioral analytics and yeah you know, you know i mean already stored somewhere the amount of data that flipping facebook and, and whatnot have or data points they've been able to extract from you over the years are far far exceed some flipping cctv or some fucking gopro strapped to a desk somewhere in the middle of botswana like you need to chill um let's continue Da, 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 da. Emilio Snaz says, We well, all knew Boy Room was a shower of grift or shit, but it's nice to see it in writing. Hedge fund privileged kids will always do more damage to underground culture than they will help. Again, what do you want? What do you want? Because when Boyroom first died, everyone was trying to clamor to get an opportunity to go on there and play a set. No one cared who the founder was or where he came from background was. I don't necessarily see the point in even bringing it up. If that person who has these affluent links or is brought up in a lap of privilege is willing to kind of, you know, get in the muck, um, roll their sleeves up and provide opportunities for people who have no other means to do so, then why would you care? Do you know what I mean? The same thing happened with Radar Radio. Who was who founded that? That was Mike Ashley's son, right? The the owner of Flipping Newcastle United. Um, would you count him as an aristocrat or would you count him as somebody quite wealthy? I would say so. No one seemed to care when he had that station going on. No one even cared when the sexual harassment stuff was going on. People were willing to turn a blind eye about that because they were happy that they had a flipping morning radio show. You know what I mean? It's like, what are people even talking about with this stuff? I don't know. I really, really don't know. I like like what do you want do you want someone working class to go do it of course they'll go do it do you want support it because they haven't got any clout or they don't know anybody or they're not paying same situation happens again it's just bullshit really um another person says what's it Arda Land says i don't get how some major venues got denied funding but boiler room and ra get creators grants from the uk smh yeah cool that's definitely a point i think this is definitely the best point the idea that Boiler Room and RA were able to get, I think another club too, there was, there was, a, there was I think a couple of clubs too that weren't able to get, I forgot what they were. But anyway, that's definitely a point, but that definitely goes to speak to more so to how the grants are dished out, um, the, the the inability or the ability to successfully know how to how to write an application, um, who to lobby for you, all those things I think play into it. I don't think it's generally just a thing of like, they read all the applications. It's definitely a bit of a gaming system. You have to take out the right people, have the right friends in the right places. That definitely does help. So that's maybe where where their aristocratic you know backgrounds come into it but for the most part it's just a game really if you can know how to game the system you can probably get the funding for your thing as well um you just know have to would be willing to do it uh be brazen about it and grift and go and then obviously once you get the funding be able to kind of put it back into the places that matter but i don't necessarily think that's something to kind of knock them down for in my opinion but you know maybe i could be wrong maybe i could be wrong um but yeah let me know your comments and opinions actually in the comments what do you think do you think boiler room does more good than bad or more bad than good i generally tend to think it does more good than bad i generally do think it has provided a platform for people to kind of boost their career and to you know garner new audiences and to increase their dj fees and be able to play in festivals and shit i generally do think that's ha actually happened and i think for a dj especially myself included being on the kind of lower rungs and things you just want to play you don't care if you get paid if you don't get paid you just want to play out on a regular basis and if somebody's willing to pay you to play on a regular basis and you can increase your fee to pay on a regular basis i don't think you're going to 
to care who fucking owns the boiler room. You don't care who owns it. You don't care where it's situated. If there's, you know, if they've got a sweatshop somewhere in the middle of China, you won't give a shit. You'll turn a blind eye because at the end of the day, you're a DJ and you like playing. You like playing records for people in, you know, dark rooms, dark arenas and making them dance and tap their feet and shit. That's what you want to do. So let's not kind of go around it any longer. And for the punters, you want to go rave. You want to have a free experience. Maybe go and see people play, you know, under the guise of some, you know, new Red Bull drink or something, whatever it may be. But it's a fun night out. It's free, free entry at least. You get to then pay for drinks at the bar. You couldn't really ask for anything better than that, really. And for the people that have heard that work there behind the scenes, they've seemed to enjoy it. It's been a great t- place, I'd imagine, to get your cloud points up, put that in your CV, and then bounce with something else that you want to do. Do you know what I mean? So I think it helps most people that can use it or exploit it to their own need. I think, but I think all this kind of finger wagging and pointing after the fact is a bit revisionist history. And now that people are a bit more, I don't know, it seems like woke or aware of these things. Now they're complaining, but I don't think this was this was ever hidden. I don't think people in the I think most people in the know knew they they weren't paying, knew that it was kind of a bit of a grift or whatnot. But they were willing to turn a blind eye because the benefits far outweighed, um, you know, the negatives. I would imagine. But again, what do I know? Leave your comments down in the comments down below. I'd love to know what you think.